Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is this little file folder, journal, notebook, whatever you want to call it. This is something I usually have in stock in my Etsy shop. I make quite a few of them. So <laughs> I should be able to make this really well on camera seeing as I've made it loads of times. We'll see, won't we? Uh, it's made from what I always call a file folder but technically I think it's actually a document wallet and it's one of these I love this colour green I just love it uh, I got these the first ones I ever got were from uh, a company called Ryman Stationers they have shops and they sell online uh, but I since found them on Amazon a little bit cheaper and also in packs of just the green. The ones I had from Ryman's were like multicoloured ones. And I think they're about seven, eight pounds for a pack of fifty. That's a lot of file folders. So you don't have to get these ones. You can pick these up in Poundland, Home Bargains, all over Asda probably. Any station is definitely WH Smith's. So yeah you don't have to have this one. I just like the colour of this one. And just be aware of where it has writing on. Yes, this one does have a lot of writing on the front, but the way I cut my file folder, that is all going to be covered in uh, book page or scrapbook paper, whatever you decide to decorate it with. So, let's have a little look at the book. So, I've already opened it. It's got the button string closures or tab string. Uh, inside, we've got this little notepad. That's refillable. Yeah. Uh, we've got a little tag. I just make a little random tag with a tiny little bit of collaging, basic. There's this little envelope, again with a cute little button string closure. Tabs, I keep calling them button string, I don't know what they're called. I make them, don't know what they are. And inside I just pop a few little tea cards. They're not digital ones, but you can use digital ones. These are the original ones. Do you know I'm squinting, I've done. Tanya, my glasses are on my head. Every time I lose my glasses and find them on my head, I think of Tanya. I've always done it. That's Tanya from Tatty Treasure, by the way. I have this habit that when I can't find my glasses, the first thing I do is pat myself on the head. I look like an absolute, complete loon. Because that's normally where they are. And if they're not there, people just see me pat myself on the head for no apparent reason. I do it in shops and all sorts. Crazy. So yeah, little envelope with a tab. I had to find out what these are called, didn't I? Well, whatever. It's, it, it is what it is, isn't it? I just pop a guest check in. And as I say on my list in Annette, just because the colour went so well. So that's why it's... And I do sell them. Another advert there. Uh, on the back, we've got another pocket with a couple of tags. These are just, again, images from the book, which I'll show you in a second. Backed on some card. And I just stamped a few random messy lines on the back. And these tabs I've cut with my Cricut. Again, you don't have to use these tabs. You can use any tabs. If you do have a Cricut machine, though, I have made this file public. So if you search Stamping Up Style Tabs, this should come up and you'd be able to cut your own. I don't sell the file, to be honest. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how to do it. To be quite honest, so if anyone does know, yeah, well, no, I don't want to sell it. I'm giving it you. It's stamping up tile style tabs. I was thinking of cutting some out and selling them in my shop. I've mentioned that before. So that's the basic little file fold. It looks a bit naked now, doesn't it? When all its stuff's took out, but you can see that it's nothing complicated. It's now this is the book that I decorate it with. When I, it's a gorgeous book. Let's move it over because my ring light's reflecting on it. Let's open it up where it's less shiny. Right, it is called a Victorian flower album. God's floral gems glistening on the verdant face of nature. Mm. So basically these were painted in 1873 by Henry Terry. And this is obviously a, a copy. But there's some beautiful images and there's some beautiful text. I'm saving the text from lots of different books and I don't know why. I've not I've not 
I can't cut that up. I just can't cut that up. I suppose that could be a journal page with fold it there, but then you can't read it. So I've not done anything with any of the text and I've had about, I've had a good few copies of this book. At the moment, I think it's running a bit expensive. I'm saying expensive. It's about £12. I have had them as low as like three and four from eBay. It's one of those things you just have to keep an eye on. But it's full of some beautiful images. Like this first page, for instance, that usually gets me three lovely tags. Because we've got these three little squat flowers. You can get a little bit of fussy cutting done from these. She looks a bit miserable, really, doesn't she? I'm in a beautiful book. I think she must be a teenager. Yeah, but I could I could spend an hour just showing you this book. It is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I've already took... Oh, look, there you go. Now, you can obviously see that is a page from a different copy, I think, because it's a lot paler. You tend to get that. Same with Edith Olden. Different reprints. There seems to be a different depth of colour sometimes. Oh, I think that, yeah, that is actually the same page. Can you tell I like this page? I don't front. So that's the same page I use for that. So, yeah. Right, that's enough about the book. You don't have to use this book. But I like that this book, you can use every little bit of this book. It's absolutely gorgeous. And my folder is made to fit this book perfectly. The folder is eight and a quarter, which the pages are. I do cut them down to eight. The reason for that is when we do the back, I like to cut both pieces from one book page. Can you see how it just matches up nicely? And there is a pocket there, but the picture just looks seamless and continuous. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. So we need to make sure that we're not going to leave a little bit there that's naked. So anyway, enough waffling about that gorgeous book. You don't have to use that book. It's just the one I like to use. And that's the one I use when I sell these on Etsy. Right, let's get into how to cut this file folder up to make this. Because we do get all these pieces apart from the tags. Uh, I just use a thinner piece of green cardstock. I use a different cardstock every time. I just usually buy a pack of 10 from Amazon. Uh, I'm not even sure what the name of this colour I'm using currently is. It's just a nice green that... It, it's a nice green that matches in it's not the exact same color the folder you see I think is too thick to make too many tags from I make that one little one but the big tags it's just too thick right let's pop that out of the way and I'll show you how to go about carving up this file folder right I'll bring my little book tricks in this is my ideas book look at that top decorating that isn't it ideas I not even stuck them on straight but I can't be doing out frilly and fancy <laughs> I know I make junk journals, but for something that's just my ideas book, my instruction book as I call it, it's got to be plain. So let's find the green file folder. Here we go. Right. Let's get the chopper out, as I call it. It's a guillotine, not a chopper. Makes it sound like I'm going to get a big axe out and cut somebody's head off, doesn't it? Right, first thing we need to do is cut off. Can you see here? There's like a gusset on this folder. I don't like that, so we're going to cut it off. And it doesn't always lie flat for cutting, so I will just cut up this gusset part just to make it easier. I'll do the other side while I'm at it. See, they're not mega quality, these. The cards are lovely quality, but the way the folder's put together isn't always. But we don't care. We just love the card. In fact, if they'd sell this in sheets of 12 by 12 or A3, I'd just buy the card, I would. Right, I'm going to cut off. Let's get my cutter on. That's why I'm a bit more zoomed out today and on my green mat. It's all green today. I'm just going to cut that edge off. Oh, excuse me. I feel like I'm going to sneeze, but I can't. I don't. It's not happening. All right, just make sure you've got it past. Can you see on this side how you've got that bit that... Or can you see? Yeah. There's a little angled bit. We want to cut that off so it's nice and flush. Yeah. And I'm going to do this side because we just don't need these. 
bits in our life, do we? So that's that. The next cut we're going to make is for the height of the document, the document wallet. I'm reading that now. The height of the folder, which is eight and a quarter inches. So, eight and a quarter. I want that section with my writing on, if you're getting the same document wallet. That does end up getting covered up with our book page. We then need to cut this piece to five inches. And if I knew how to make these numbers come up on the screen, I'd do it, but I don't. I might have a look and see if I can get all whizzy with me editing. Editing, she said. Anyway, that's cut to five inches. And before we do any more cutting, we need to do a bit of scoring. Now, I'm using a lot of fancy tools to make this, and I'm using them because I've got them. I've been crafting for years. I mean, half of my, t <laughs> half of my tools are broke. Yeah, so last time we had my broken corner chomper, that's broken. Now I have got my Stamping Up Simply Scored board. It did have a nice little thing on there, a little flap so you could store stuff. But oh, that broke off. You can also see I've got bits of tape stuck on. That's just for things that I make regularly so that I know where to score. It's for my straw paper envelopes, basically, that one. But this... I make this so often and I did make some of these up yesterday <clears throat> for the Etsy shop so I'm keeping them in stock at the moment because that kind of thing that sells nice for Christmas anyhow enough about that so we've made our front flap to five inches you will then see we've got a factory crease that lines up with the five inch mark lovely I'm just going to give that another score and then I want to come across a quarter of an inch onto this flat part and score again so we've got a little spine gusset whatever you want to call it and I go down it a few times with this being a very thick card now I'm gonna move across and I want to score again at ten and a half which gives us a five and a half inch width on our little booklet so scoring at ten and a half Again, go down a few times. I'm using, yes, uh, I mentioned this, didn't I? The Fiskars, yeah, embossing boards, yeah. A couple of people did comment, said that they'd got those. One commented, says she still uses the tools. And as you can see, so do I. No idea where boards are. They're hanging about somewhere. No idea where. Now, so we've done that, ten and a half. Then we score again at ten and three quarters giving us another quarter of an inch gusset we then need to bring our chopper back in and I'm going to bring my little chopper in because it's easier to get in and off now we've cut, cut it down a little bit I can fit it in this little chopper now we want to cut we're making the flap now for this bit we're making cutting this flap yeah so we want to cut that down to two inches so align that score mark up on the two inch part and cut so that is the base now of our file folder right that part we're going to use for the pockets and the little book but yeah we're going to cut the long inner pocket, which wants to be two and quarter inches wide. So let's put this back in. Let's line that up at two and a quarter. And chop that off. We're then going to do the... I'll show you. Here we go. We've just done that pocket. We're going to do this pocket. Now this pocket, because the file is five and a half, we don't want it five and a half. Otherwise we won't be able to close it. It'll butt up into those creases and just, it won't work. So I'm going to make that five and a quarter. And the outer one is going to be not five, a little bit bigger. Again, not quite five or it might hang over. I'm going to do that one eighth under five and a half. One eighth under five and a half. So I'm going to do that one first because this is the one I use this crease one for. 
So an eighth and a five and a half is five and three eighths. Who would have thought that? And the height of these is three and three quarters. I can remember that one. So I'll cut that out. Three and three quarters. By an eighth and a five and a half. It's just the way, it's, it's the way I think. It's a bit like time, isn't it? It's like five to three. <laughs> An eighth under five and a half, yeah. Anyway, that's enough silliness. Now I'm going to bring in this piece that we cut off at the beginning. We're going to make our little notebook out of that and our inside pocket. So the notebook is seven and a half inches high, long. Oh, I've got to get Big Chopper out for this. Come back, Big Chopper. Because I ain't got room to keep all these on my desk. I just keep chucking them down the side of me. This is how I work all the time with me. I don't have room for guillotines on the table all the time. I have a little space. There we go. So that's seven and a half inches high. This part, you know, the, bring it back in again, Julie. Where's it gone? Where's it gone? Oh my God, I've lost it. I've, I've lost my notebook. It's terrible, that, isn't it? Where's that gone? I better find it because I'm posting this art today. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Panic over. Bring it all back in. The notebook, yeah. I need, I need 10 desks, me. We're making this bit. So that is two and a quarter inches deep. So again, we'll line that score mark up with two and a quarter and cut. So we've now got that bit, which then leaves us this piece of card to make our inside pocket. So we want to make that five and five and a quarter. This one, it's a bit narrower. Five and a quarter by three and three quarters. If I know how to, I've said this, and I, if I could write these on the screen, I would. I really need to. I'll tell you what, I'll write these measurements in description, yeah? That'll make it easy, won't it? Then you've got them wrote down. And you don't have to try to pause your video on exact right place. Right, so that gives us most of our pieces. The only other piece we need to make is a little tag. And which one shall I make that from? That one. Now, you can make this tag bigger than I make it. I've no idea why I decided on the size I did. I just did. And my tag's about four and a quarter by two and a quarter. So, like I said, I have no idea why it's that size. I think maybe I'd mucked up the first time I made this and I needed these little pieces to cut me green circles out of. Dunno. And I just like that size. Four and a quarter. No, it's not four and a quarter. It's three and three quarters. I'll do that. Three and three quarters. That's it. That looks better. Three and three quarters by two and a quarter. But again, as long as it fits in your pocket, it doesn't matter what size that is. Now, here's when I'm going to bring out some gizmos and gadgets. I'm going to do a series called Gizmos and Gadgets because I do have quite a few gizmos and gadgets. Because again, I've been crafting years. I've, I've built up quite a stash of things. So let's have a look at our <clears throat> notebook. It's got a little tab on there. And I've done that with the file, the tab punch board. Yes, from We Are Memory Keepers, which is this. And I do get quite a lot of use out of this. It's quite an handy little gadget. But if you don't have one of these, just make your tab some other way. Let's have a look at this. Can you see here how that folds over? Well, right, let's use this one, a bit less waste. Watch. If I cut there, we've already got the crease. Can we get a few tabs out of this? I'll cut up there. Then if I bring my corner chomper in, or well, you can do this by hand, just do it anyway. I have all these gadgets and gizmos because it's easy when I'm making lots of things. If I'm just making one, I don't tend to use as many gadgets and gizmos on things that like one-offs. Now I've made that and you can just pop that on there. There you go. That would be just as cute. 
I've got this punch board, so I'm going to use it. Oh, you can see bits in it from last time. Yeah, I've been making a few of these over the week and stock my shop up. Right, I'm going to start off. If you've got one of these, you probably know how to use it. Or, you never know, I've <laughs> I've had some gadgets that have been in cupboard for years and I've no idea how to use them. Alright, I'm going to cut that off there. Yep, and I'm using the medium size tab for this. So, cut again there. Put that in so we don't lose it. I tend to spin this round a lot using it. And I'm going to cut off that part. So I tend to line it up at this end first. I just find it a bit neater. That's just personal preference. Lots of personal preference in crafting, isn't there? What's that expression? There's more than one way to skin a rabbit. It's true. We all get to the same place by doing it different ways quite often. And your way is no better than someone else's. It's just a different way. Right, I'm going to bring the corner chomper in now. Oh, open it up first, works a treat. Chomp. And I'm going to chomp this one. And this one. And that's now ready. <clears throat> the only thing we'd put on there, I put a little word on it, says the story. Now, th I do these on my, uh, I do them in the Word. I set it up for doing labels. And I just print random words. I like things like <laughs> bits and bobs. Do you know I might put bits and bobs on this one? That's a bit Yorkshire, that, isn't it? Bits and bobs, this and that. <laughs> yeah. I might actually do a new one, faffage. Fafferings. Yeah, that'd be good. So, yeah, that will go on there. So, that's that. I would then go on to round these corners. I don't round all corners, so I will do the corner rounding with you before I disappear to ink. Oh, and a little bit of punching. So if you look in this, I just put these little semicircles in again. Use a punch or draw around something and cut it out. It's entirely up to you how you do it. Again, I'll keep saying it. If you've got the <coughs> gadgets, use them. If you haven't got the gadgets, use something different. Right, I've got this two inch punch. So that's my inner pocket. I know it's my inner because it doesn't have a crease. And I'm just going to take a little semicircle out of there. That's my side pocket. I'll take another semicircle out of there. I'm not going to take a semicircle out of this one. Reason being, I will do that when I've got my paper on it so that we can line up the semicircles in both. Yeah, can you see? So it lines up nicely. I'll show you how I'm, I do that. But I will cut the bottom corners, round them. So that's that, that's that. Oh, our little tag. Again, gizmo and gadget time. Now you can use, oh, that's the wrong one, wrong gizmo. Too many gizmos. You know, I thought the I always thought these we are memory keepers things were colour co coordinated, but the apps actually random. So I've ended up with two pink ones that do different jobs, which is a bit annoying. It just cuts that off. Now you see now, I do it for bigger ones, and now everyone else does it. Trusty old, what's this one? Oh, it's the English Heritage member card. Look, you line that up and cut across. Is that actually that size? It's nearly that size. Yeah, but I'm, I've got my gizmo, so I'm going to use my gizmo. My friend's got a dog called Gizmo. <laughs> oh. Now, the actual folder, I do round all four corners on that. There we go. Now, folding it up, just a little tip. I've seen other people give this tip, but you might not have. It can be very difficult sometimes to fold crease lines when they're very close together. So I get my ruler, I cover the first crease line, I put the edge of the ruler right up to the second one. So one's under the ruler and one's right up to the edge. And then I fold up, fold that up to the ruler. And that lets you crease it that bit easier. Yeah. And then to do the other one, I find it better to turn it upside down and do exactly the same again. Cover the first one up, 
butt it up to that crease line fold over and then quickly with your bone folder that's how i that's how i find it easiest to do my nice perfect little creases now this one we've already got one folder because that was a factory fold as i call it the fold that's already in the folder so let's cover that up butt that up and fold up press it down and just give it a score right there you go we have got our basic <clears throat> excuse me i'm gonna get a cup of tea for my second half our basic file folder so that's the file folder that's our notepad there we go. check and then we've got the pockets all ready. Now, all these now need inking and you really don't want to watch me inking. So I'm going to go away, ink these and I'll be back in just a second. Bye for now. Hello again, I'm back. As you can see, I've done all my inking. Yep. I was looking how long this video has been as well. It's going to be very long if I do this file folder all in one. So what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to show you how to do my little round tabs. So we've done everything that we need the green file folder for. And then I'm going to do a separate video, I think, on assembling it and cutting the papers. Or oh, it's just going to go on forever and you're going to get bored and not want to watch it. I would anyway. <laughs> but that's me. So, yeah, again, it's gizmo gadget time. I use my circle punches for these. Where's my big circle punch? It's got to be out somewhere because I've been using it constantly. Come on, come on. One inch circle punch, where are you? There it is. So yeah, we've got lots of little scraps of file folder left and these are the scraps I use for my little circles. So if you look, we need two big circles, but I've doubled those up. So we need four big circles. On the inside, I put a medium circle just to back it and strengthen that a little bit. And then you can't see, but between the circle and the page, I put some tiny circles just to lift that up a little bit. So we need to cut four big circles. So let's crack on with that. I used to cut the little holes and then cut the circle around, but I've gone back to cutting big circle first and writing it on with a dot. Because I don't know about you, but sometimes the shadow on the punch will make me still not punch it so your circle's in the middle. Look, I'll show you what I mean. Some people will do this, which I thought were a fabulous idea until it started going belly shaped again. Punch the little hole, line that up around it, but I get shadow when I can't see and I'm not sure if it's in the middle. Yeah, point proven. So I've gone back to just doing this first and then I write it on. I draw where the middle is with a pencil. So that's my four big holes. Got this decimus, isn't it? Do you know, if I move this out of the way, you'll be able to see what I'm doing a bit better, won't you? All this green is like, yeah, a bit too much green in the world there. I'm going to get my guest check. Oh yeah, we can see it. So I've cut four big circles. I'm then going to cut two, <laughs> yeah I need a medium circle for the back of there and one for the back of there, so I need two of those. I'm then going to need another four of these for my little envelope, yeah so they're double with a little one underneath. So yeah, there's a lot of circles. Do you know I've never counted this up? I just make them as I go along normally. So that's one, another scrap. But hey ho, plenty of scraps. So we've got four of those for the envelope. Four to go behind all the rivets. One, two, three, four and we need a few little ones now this little one i have to punch first it's so small let me show you how diddy it is yeah 
I mean, these don't have to be so perfect. You can put anything behind there. It's just to strengthen it. As you can see, I didn't even get old properly in the middle there. It didn't really matter. So I'm going to cut the centre hole first in these because it's such a small, fiddly little circle. Again, I'll not line it up, but because you don't see these, it doesn't matter so much. They just uh, provide a little bit of a gap so that your string has more room to wind around. If I cut that, I don't want to waste anything. I'll get a couple more of them out. Yeah, Circle City, isn't it, this? Oh, I've not showed you how to make that little envelope yet. Again, I think I'll do that on the next one. I just want to do everything that we're going to use this green card for today. Then we can tidy it all away and get it out of our lives. Yeah, that's it. So now to punch holes in the centre of these, I'm going to grab my pencil and this is how I do it now. I just find it easier. I, I, I draw a little circle. That looks about in the middle to me. Then I line all four of them up. And because you can see through this hole in the chomper, there you go, there you go, I've got it, I am quite happy with that one. Same with these, four of them need to be quite perfect, don't they, for my little string and button closure on my envelope. So I'm going to draw a little circle in the middle, sorry for me, I'd go away. If this doesn't work out perfectly, I then use them to go behind tabs just to strengthen card. And I'm going to punch that again. Yeah, that's that's good enough. I'll do that with the other four. Draw my little circle again. You don't see this, it gets punched out while you've drawn. Make sure that hole's not blocked so I can see. And there we go. Yeah, oh, that's a bit what They're definitely going to be ones that go behind tabs. <laughs> you don't see they have gone a bit. Yeah. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of glue. <sighs> I'm back on my tonic now. It's working. Pound a bottle, eight pound a bottle. Yeah. It's not rocket science, is it? Yeah. We'd like to save a bob or two as Yorkshire birds. Come on. You can do it. I've never tried putting one of those metal tips on here. I sometimes wonder, is the art glitter glue a different formula or is it just the delivery system that makes it what it is? I don't know. So yeah, as you can see, I'm just gluing two circles together. They then get bunged under my mat to keep flat as they dry. I find all sorts under this mat. I found a tag under it the other day. I think it then got popped in someone's Etsy order. If you've ever ordered from me on Etsy. <laughs> I've not really established a brand with my packaging and free gifts. It's a bit like I, I sent a package as though everyone's a junk journal. If you're not a junk journal, you probably get an order from me and you think, what on earth has she packed my order in? I'll use various envelopes, paper bags. Uh, I'll just whip up a quick envelope on the sewing machine. I might make a fabric pouch. Whatever suits the order, really. I'm not saying everyone gets one of them. If you order some, you might order some straw paper. And I think, oh, I'll just put some extra bits in. I also don't like to pay for <laughs> posting empty space. You order something off me that costs, that weighs 400 grams. I'm going to stick some in that box that takes it right up to 500 gram maximum for that weight limit so like, yeah i'm not paying to post fresh air <laughs> um, i make it i make it sound like well, it, it's just been frugal isn't it i'm not sitting on pots of money <laughs> i'm not one of these that yeah i'll <laughs> I spent up and say me a week and leave three million to cats so that's so not me <clears throat> i spend uh, as little as possible on essentials then you've got more for fun aren't you kids can be expensive and i've got two of them 
twins, oh my twins. They're brilliant. It's either, you either feel like you've got ten kids or no kids, depending on whether they're best of friends or worst of enemies on that particular day. Right, that's our little things cut. We've got those cut and I'm not going to lose those because we're going to use them in the next video. Yep. So we'll leave it there. We've got all our bases cut. I'm not going to make you wait another week for this. I'm going to put these on on consecutive days, I think. Yeah. So that you can crack on with it. So thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you tune back in for episode two. If you like what you see, consider like and consider subscribing and liking. If you like, you're going to like, aren't you? Yeah. So thank you very much. See you next time. Bye.